Hi, I'm Kent. Let's work on a new handle mold. For the observant among you, you may have noticed I haven't been doing many videos recently, and that's because I'm in a new space. I ended up moving, and with it, my pottery studio. I kind of sort of have it back up and going now, so I wanted to go ahead and do a video. While I was packing up boxes, I was also working on a new handle design. This one here. So this here is an ear-shaped handle, or a question mark, depending on how you want to call it. So it swoops up and down versus my old handles, which were more D-shaped. I started with these because they're symmetrical. Both the top and bottom halves are the same. That means I only need one plaster mold piece to form this. I can basically reuse it twice. This one, because it's two different pieces, needed two different parts, which required more software. I also had to do a lot of stuff to go ahead and get this curve working, and that is indeed working. I can basically draw an SVG, similar to how shape cast forms work, and create this piece. I don't have that integrated with the website. But if you're interested in creating your own custom handle, definitely shoot me an email and we can talk. So here's the handle form. And then to make a mold, we need all of these pieces here. So this looks like a lot, but it's not too bad. So let me separate it out. So first, there are two bottom plates. This winds up being the face of the plaster that mates together. There's obviously two recesses here, and that's for the mold for the handle shape itself. There's a little groove here that the handle piece fits down into. Go ahead and get it aligned. And that groove is one of the reasons why these handles are a fixed size. Basically, there's some really tight tolerances there to try and get everything to work out. So if you wind up stretching this, it probably will break. So definitely not recommended. I've had some people that try have resized the molds and yeah, it doesn't work. All right, and then we need something to contain the plaster. And there are some outer walls. These pieces here, which go on the back. And these are actually the same across both sides. And then there are two pieces here so they have little cutouts right here, and that is for the handle piece itself. And while they look the same, these are generated for each half, and so they only fit one way. Just like that, and like that. So then you go ahead and tape these all together. I've been using tuck tape. I can't find mine right now, otherwise I would show you. It's probably in a box still somewhere. But basically you tape all the seams together, Flip it over and tape the handle in so it doesn't leak. Do that for both sides. Basically then measure up the volume. I don't bother measuring up the handle part itself. So just measure the length, the width, and the depth. Multiply that by two since these are the same. They're just mirrored or almost mirrored. Mix up your plaster and pour it in. And then you wind up with these. These are the molds. So what ends up happening is you take this piece off first. So you wind up with something like that. You can then take off the outer walls here. They slide out to the sides. And then there's a little lip that is sticking up from the surface of the plaster and you basically very carefully pull this up, flex it a little bit and pull it out. You might get a tiny little bit chip out, but in practice it hasn't been a problem. Do that for both sides. Go ahead and put it together, let it dry. And you wind up with a brand new plaster mold. So this is what we're gonna slip cast in today. There are some notches here, some keys for the molds to align. These are not particularly tight, and it's because the tolerances on the 3D prints aren't great and things can move around a little bit. So these are really just for rough alignment. So you can get it in the right spot, but when you actually go to make the slip cast piece, you wanna double check that everything is aligned. You can look down in here, the wells where the slip will go, and make sure everything's lined up well. Take a rubber band. And secure it all together. I've actually slip cast a couple of handles in here, but those were just tests. I haven't had a chance to attach one to a pot because my molds are all packed up. And I have two different forms here that I think would work well. These are in the gallery on the ShapeCast webpage if you wanna go ahead and check them out yourself. This is the 12 ounce mug, and this is a tall cup. And I think this would work well on either of them. I intentionally made this longer than it needs to be. In particular, I extended this piece here out farther, and that's so you can trim it off. 
you can potentially trim it at an angle like this or trim it like that, however, make it shorter, whatever you want to do. So there's some adjustability here. Just like if you're pulling a handle, obviously what you pull isn't exactly right. You wind up needing to trim it a little bit. So you can take it, put it on the side, push it behind the side, what you want, what kind of curve you like, up and down, of course. There, same for this one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this one here. I think it will complement the shape pretty well. It's got a nice little curve here. This has a little bit of curve. And so here is the mold for that shape. Let me go ahead and mix up the slip really well since it's been sitting and we can slip cast. So just like my old pottery studio, I have my slip in these buckets here and I have these spouts on the bottom so I can pour it out. I need to raise up this jack here so it's easier to pour. Make sure the slip's coming out okay. Oh, no problem. All right, so first up we'll do the handle. body. Okay, so here are our two molds. The handle I want to go ahead and let it cast solid. And for the pot form, usually after 25 or so minutes, I will go ahead and dump out the excess slip. So that way it can start to firm up a little bit and I'll let it sit for another half an hour. So let's check back in a little bit. All right, so it's time to do mold. This one here still has a tiny little bit of slip in it, so I'm gonna dump that out. There we go, it's basically cast salad. Let's go ahead and trim these. So for the pots, I like to take a razor and just go down to the slip well shelf very gently. do a quick trim first. Just take off these sprues here. So there's the handle straight out of the mold. Got a tiny little seam line, but not much of one. And sponge that down. Well, it's easy to get to. That's what I can get while it's attached. And for the pot, I just have a small piece of cardboard to help catch. So now we want to figure out how we want to attach it. I think I want to trim some more off. Basically just eyeballing this to see kind of sort of where I want it. There we go, I just made some marks with my knife. The reason I cut off the sprue is now you can set it down to trim it easier. And you want to cut a small curve in, basically the one that matches the curve of your pot, or as close to it as possible. There we go, something like that. And if we look from the ends, Probably trim a little bit more so it matches better. And all this stuff is pretty wet, so you really don't need to score it, but if you want to, you can. I just take some slip out of my bucket. Nice coating. Decide where I want it. 
and touch it. Gently push it down. Don't want to deform the pot or the handle. And I'll take some extra slip and just go around. Make sure we have a good connection. I need to get one of those silicone tipped brush thingies that helps smooth these out. One of the tools I don't have right now. There we go, all attached. This is still pretty damp, so I'm gonna go ahead and set it on a wear board and let it form up a little bit more. Once it's a little bit closer to leather hard, I can go ahead and deal with the seam line a little bit more and touch up the connection where the handle is. It's the next day. I went ahead and covered it up with plastic overnight so that the water levels could go and homogenize. And we're in good shape now. I sponged it off once, but I think it needs maybe one more sponge and then it should be good to go. We're getting to a firm leather heart at this point. So just take a damp sponge, go over the connection, seam line. Some of the layer lines transferred through from the original print but those are easy to get rid of. Get the rim. All right, and there we go. One custom handle on my form. I think that works well. You can see a little bit of the artifacts. There's maybe a faint shadow line from where the seam was, so I probably need to be a little bit more careful in terms of aligning the mold. And my connection, I think will stand up okay. It could use a little bit more attention, but I'm going to glaze this and glaze hides a lot. Haven't been brave enough to make a pot with a handle that isn't glazed yet. That would definitely take some work. But there we go. So as I mentioned, I haven't been able to put that on the website yet, but reach out if you're curious about it or want a custom handle. And my videos will probably continue to be intermittent for a little while. I'm still getting everything set up and I'm going to be doing a little travel as well. And sorry for any production issues getting this new space up and going. I know the lighting isn't particularly great yet and I'm having some audio issues, but hopefully I can get those sorted out as well. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.